way too special. Yeah. Pure delicious. Pure delicious. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family loves me. And that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. I appreciate the love. Bam, 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 bam. I appreciate the support. 33 years, man. Road to 100K. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. We out here. We grinding. We grinding, man. We putting this positive message out there in the world. And we hoping this is being received, man. So everybody who rock with me, everybody who's been supporting me, big love, man. Big love. I mean it from the bottom of my heart, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend, man. We, we trying to build this uh, platform up as big as it can get, man. So this message can get as loud as it can get. Um, man, today I was on the thinking process of just thinking about, you know, different things that, that you know, I've been telling y'all, different things that went on in prison. And it came to my mind about uh, revenge, man. You know, <laughs> revenge is serious, man. Revenge is, is, is uh, I don't know, you know, people might want to call it karma, revenge, whatever you want to call it, but... I, I know a lot of people, a lot of dudes in prison, man, that, um, you know, they made a play or did something that they felt like they had to do or did it for whatever reason they did it for. And, um, you know, dudes, you know, going to come back and get you, man. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't get rid of them, they going to come back and get you, man. That's just how it is in prison because... Not all the time, but a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? It depends because dudes going to put a battery in their bag. Dudes going to humiliate them. Dudes going to talk about them so bad that, you know, they feel or I'm, I'm guesstimating that they feel like if they don't if they don't make a move on that, then this is what they're going to have to go through the rest of their bit. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have to straighten it, especially if that person is in your is in your vicinity, is in your area. And that goes for everything from, you know, getting beat up, <laughs> getting knocked out, getting, you know, hands put on you and you on the losing end. It, it, it's like in prison, you know, a lot of dudes be saying that, you know, or used to say it in, in uh, comments and stuff like, you ain't never lose, man. You ain't never take an L. You ain't never, you take L's when you go to prison. That's, that's your biggest L and everything else from there is an L. Even when you, when when you get a W, you still taking an L because you gon you gonna get punished for it. But I say that to say you can't take L's in prison like that. You can't take them people taking stuff from you, people putting their hands on you, people you can't take those type of L's and have those type of people around you that you took the L from because man, that's just gonna make your 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 bit just that much worse. It's gonna make the things you have to go through are even more difficult and it's already difficult as is. So, you know, a lot of dudes learn that lesson the hard way, man. They 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 really learn that lesson the hard way. And um I'm I'm one of them. I'm I'm included in the bunch. You know, I told y'all about the story, man, when um early in my bit, you know what I'm saying, and I uh, you know, caught dude out there on the basketball court running his mouth and, and it ran up on me and I bloop, bloop, Knocked him out, and you know his friends get him together, and he he ain't want no more because he he couldn't take no more. So I'm feeling you know like yeah yeah that's what it is. And you know who would him and all? Yeah, that's the same dude that ended up boop, clucking me in the head. You know with the lock in the sock. You know now that was a lesson learned. It put me you know when you know you can't do that. You just can't do it, man. Because you you think because you can whoop somebody or you think because you can do this to somebody that that's the, the, the say all, the end all. It's not. It's not because you, you're not out in the world. You're not out in society. You're not in this big universe. You know, you already in prison. Dudes is already convicted of crimes. They already, it ain't like, see, on the street, dude might say, Okay, he did this to me, he did that to me. If I go back and do this to him, then I'm going to get locked up or woo, 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 or I'm going to get some time or whatever. 
Now, in prison, you already got some time. You already locked up. So it's now you, 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 you're dealing with reputation. You're dealing with, you know, a person's character. And in order for them to maintain that reputation and that character, even while taking an L, if that person is around you, you have to deal with that person. Or the, or, or, or the loss is going to be even greater. You know what I'm saying? The loss going to be even greater, man. So... Yeah, man, and you know, when that dude clucked me in the head, you know, it was a lesson learned, you know what I'm saying? At the same time, I ended up, you know, getting the best of him for that for after he did that, but it ain't take that it ain't it ain't take that goose egg off my head. He could have split my skull. You know, now you take those scenarios and you you, you process them. Now what if he had the Bethlehem? What if he hit me in the head with the Bethlehem? I wouldn't even be here to talk to y'all. You see what I'm saying? I wouldn't even be here to talk to y'all. And I've known that to happen to dudes get hit in the head with that Bethlehem and they went out of here. You know what I'm saying? Some survived, some went out of here. I know dudes went out of here with that upper room. They gone. You know what I'm saying? For sleeping on people. You know, case in point. I told y'all a little bit about the story about, you know, the dude uh, or cowboy who, you know, took took the white dude's stuff. And, and, and had the audacity to, to, to stay in the party with him and go down there and gamble, you know, with the dude's money. You know, a white guy, because he thinking it's a white guy, so he thinking it's cool. And the white guy could not stop him from taking this stuff. So he figured, oh, he's scared. He ain't going to do nothing. If I got him. Nah, man, he came up behind him and hit him in the top of his head, sitting right there at the table. DOA, dead, killed him. I mean, he took his life. You know what I'm saying? That's the revenge that he took because he knew that if he didn't respond to that, then whatever, however much time he had to do, he knew that people would be taking everything that he got. So it won't be no need to get anything because somebody going to come take it because you let him take it and you let him take it and stay right around you. So it's more or less saying that you're a coward. You ain't going to stand up for yours. And in a environment that's full of wolves and vultures and you know they gonna come and get it because everybody wants some everybody needs some nobody in prison has what they need nobody in prison has enough so they gonna come get it so by him knowing that i guess he came to the understanding in his mind about how he was gonna do his bit and he was gonna take the consequences of whatever may happen, but he won't gonna be just like, you just gonna take me, take my stuff, take my stuff, take my stuff. And he won't go on for it. But it also falls on Cowboy for the underestimating of him. You know what I'm saying? And thinking that, you know, you could do these things. And this happens every day in prison. Every day in prison, especially more so as I did more time when I came to like the last decade of my bid and these new young fellas coming in and this gang stuff coming in. Man, these dudes be doing stuff to dudes and thinking it is sweet or thinking because they got a lot of cats or thinking because they can, you know, they can vanish take you. There's no, it's, it's going to be no repercussion. It's going to be no revenge taken. Nah, you, you, you sadly mistaken, man. And some of those mistakes, man, can truly, truly cost you your life, man. Truly cost you your life. So <clears throat> you got, excuse me, you got to be. You know, it's a philosophy, man. I think Machiavelli says it, you know. Um, you know, as I used to read a lot of philosophy, as I told y'all, but I, I know Machiavelli, man, says, um, you know, Nicolette Machiavelli says, you know, if, if, if you have to hurt a man, you know, you should do so with such violence and um, viciousness that he is not capable of seeking revenge, you know. And what I take out of that is the philosophy that you have to have in prison. If it gets to the point where you got to put your hands on somebody or you got to do something to somebody, you got to make sure they're not around you no more. And then on top of that, you have to watch their friends and their associates because you can't get rid of all of them. You know what I'm saying? If you do something to somebody and they have to go to the infirmary or they whatever, whatever, and they, you know, ship them up off the compound, you, in order for you to come back out on the yard, he may have associates and he may have friends and he have, may have people that he deal with that may want to seek revenge for him. So you, you got to watch them and then you have to also assume in your mind that what you did to him, 
that is they not willing to you know put their time their life on the line for him especially if he's not there but if he was there those same people will be the one to put the battery in his back those same people might be the ones to help him take revenge on you but when you cut the head off of the snake and get rid of the head the rest of the body may just you know it it's undecided you know what i'm saying because it takes a lot to really put your life on the line for yourself you know what i'm saying you have to have some type of fortitude about you to do that let alone for someone else you see what i'm saying so yeah you 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 can't have people stay around you like that man it always it always or most of the time or a lot of times end up bad for you when 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 you do that man you know it always do um i told y'all about my celly man the little young dude way back in the day mag you and um when the dude you know his celly stabbed him up you know what i'm saying and, um and, and, and end up getting up getting out of that getting out of that situation but the administration turned around and a year or something later and put the dude right in the block with him. And Mag, you almost killed him. Caught him in the shower and almost killed him. You see what I'm saying? So that's the revenge is going to come back on you. And you 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 got to protect yourself. You And you get, definitely cannot rely on the uh, administration. Because right there, that was a minif, uh, administrative a uh, 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 flaw, man, that they did that because they knew that they had already had a physical altercation, a weapon altercation. But being there's so much people in the system and, and on that institution, and there's a three three uh, institution in one, that they made that mistake. But that mistake could be at, at the cost of your life. That's why I say you got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You got to stay on point at all times, especially if you have been in physical altercations or you have been in you know, a, a beast with people, man, you cannot have them people around you, man. You just can't, you just cannot, man. You you cannot have them around you because it, it can very well cost you your life, man. Easily cost you your life. And in my experience in prison, you know, even from just regular fights to, you know, you know, you know, getting hit, you know, with the Bethlehem, um, you know how they say revenge is, is is a dish best served cold? Well, in prison, revenge is, you know, usually served with the Bethlehem, <laughs> you know. And, um, yeah, that, that, that ain't going to be nothing good for nobody, you know what I'm saying? And then, like I say, if it comes at you when you least expect it or when you don't expect it because you, you done got comfortable, you done thought that whatever you did was, was, was okay, man, man, you're going to be in a world of hurt if, if if you're lucky, you know, because you could get taken out of here, you know. And like I said, over the years, I've seen a lot of plays um, be made, you know, in in the name of revenge because the first person got out on you and they thought everything was cool and they thought you was okay. And, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, yeah, I didn't put the fear in them or I didn't did this or woo, woo, woo. And then, you know, like I say, it turns out to be, you know, your worst nightmare. You know, your worst nightmare. I've told y'all stories like this, man. I've told y'all plenty of them, man. Like my homeboy, Big A, man. Shout out to Big A, man. DC, Big A. You know, go back and watch the video. You know, um, with that incident, with, when, when Big A ended up, you know, hitting Cook over somebody else's beef. You understand me? Um, and then getting in the situation that he got in and, and, and couldn't get out unless he came out with the same dude that he hit. And he, you know, he did what he thought he was doing to to, to make the situation better, to smooth the situation out. Apologies, this, that, and the third. All of that. You know what I'm saying? And it was cool until it wasn't. You see what I'm saying? Because people got in his ear. People put the battery in his back. People saying, you you know, you letting this dude walk out here like this and he did that to you. It ain't no such thing as apology. It ain't no, no, man. It's, you know, all of this, you know, influxing in his ear, you know, and he's sitting on a, a, a life sentence. You know, he almost killed Big A. He literally almost killed Big A. Big A had to be, you know, rushed to the hospital, man, and he almost died. You know what I'm saying? Be because of that, you know, 
comfortability, got comfortable with the situation, thought everything was smoothed out. But in prison, man, it just ain't no smoothing out. Once it go sour, it's, 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 it's sour. Once it go bad, it's bad. You know what I'm saying? Once it go physical, it's, it's over. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to put your hands on me and stay around me. I'm not going to want you around me. I'm not going to feel comfortable with you around me. You understand? I'm just not, you know. And like I say, these these is these is hard lessons, but real, real lessons, man, that have has to be learned, man. You know, it, it has to be because I'm telling you, it, these lessons can cost you your life when you're in prison. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a lot different from out here in the, in the real world. And in the real world, it's the same thing. You know, how many times if you see it out here in the real world, somebody do something to this person or, the, or that person, and then that person comes back and do this. This is what all these crazy, um, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of these crazy uh, school shootings and, and, and the insanity be about. They, they're getting bullied or they're getting mad at school, then they come back and do this. This is what the, um, what they call it, the post office workers. They get mad at work and they come back. And it's revenge, man. You got to be prepared for that. You got to understand that you are not safe. When you have run afoul of somebody else because you don't know their frame of mind. And you cannot think just because you you came out on top in that situation that that situation is dead and that situation is over. Nah, you can't. You got this now you got enemies. <laughs> you got enemies now, man. You 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 got enemies. And once you got enemies, you have to always be aware of those enemies, man. You know, and like I say, these 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 situations, man, um have have happened a lot. And I used to take note and I used to pay attention and I used to, because you have to, because like I told y'all before, every day in prison, man, you're learning, you're learning, man. You got to stay in tune to what's going on. You know, that's why I'm so marveled. And I mean marveled at dudes that just accomplish so many things while in prison. I know dudes who's written books and got the books published and, you know, um, did this and that. I mean, just got degrees and all under all of this pressure, under all of this chaos and, you know, and, and, and violence and flim flammery and larceny and skullduggery and tomfoolery, they was able to accomplish, you know, major things. You know what I'm saying? And um, I marvel at that because I, I attempted to do some of those. I created a program, but I attempted to write a book. I attempted to do these things, but you will lose focus of what's going on around you. And once you done been in the mix, you done created violence, you done had beefs, you done put hands on people, you, you can't get unfocused with what's going on around you because that revenge could come back at you at any time. They could bring somebody on the camp that was dude that you knocked out four years ago, brother, now he locked up and he know you knocked him out and he know you had beef with his brother, now he on you. You know what I'm saying? He he trying to zero in on you. You got to know these things. You got to know what's going on around you because when you don't know what's going on around you, man, that's when it goes down and you you are ill prepared, you know. Um, but revenge is real in prison, man. And I'm telling you, it's, it's usually served with the Bethlehem. Archie. Archie, y'all remember I told y'all about Archie, my homeboy Archie, that was drug dealer on the street and getting money and getting money in prisons and you know what I'm saying then the dudes you know they they robbed them and did this and thought it was sweet and thought it was sweet man and Archie came around there on that yard and walked by them several times man and end up not not and putting that belt and he took a dude's owl man he took a dude's owl man that dude almost died as well and then Archie had to go through uh, the the hole and the segregation and so long and they dragged him so much he lost his mind. He lost his mind. That's what the hole is designed to do. And like I told y'all to this day right now, they have deemed that unconstitutional to keep people back there for years and decades. They have de deemed that to be cruel and unusual punishment. After all of these decades and decades and decades that they've been doing this, now all of a sudden it's cruel and unusual. That means it's always been cruel and unusual punishment. People lose their mind back there, man. People take their life back there. People become, you know, super depressed back there. You know what I'm saying? Manic depressed. They just can't get out of it because of the psychological games that are play on your head to be in that solitude, that silence, that without human contact for so long. You know, and that's what happened to Archie. When I ran into him again, he was, 
you know, doing hand signals. He wouldn't even talk. He was so gone. And this was a dude that was sharp on the street, a money maker on the street, a, 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 a mover, a shaker, even in penitentiary. But that that incident and that uh, a, a situation that he had to go through with that segregation, it made him lose it. It made him lose it. But that came from revenge for what had happened to him. And those dudes got caught slipping because they thought that they had got away with something because he didn't, you know, exact revenge at that moment. You know what I'm saying? But revenge can come at any time. I've known dudes that, man, they call and rock you to sleep, man. You do something to them today and they may not get you for four months, three months, six months, a year later, two years later. But it ain't left their mind. It ain't left their mind, man. And that is an enemy. <laughs> That is an enemy. It ain't no, to, I, I just use my own philosophy. It ain't no apologies for me if you didn't try to hurt me. It, it, there's no apologies that I'm going to accept if you have tried to hurt me where I'm now going to look at you as not an enemy or I'm now going to look at you as not a threat. There's, how? When I only got one life and you, you attempted to take it or hurt it or to harm it. I can't look at you as and say to myself that, I trust you now, or we cool now. Nah, that ain't, no, that, no, nah, not in this world. <laughs> no, not me. You know, not me. I can't accept that. You know what I'm saying? I can't. You know, and, um, you know, Frank Nitty. Shout out to Frank Nitty, man. He out here somewhere. If you out here, man, find me, man. But Frank Nitty, I told y'all the situation with Frank Nitty. Situation with Frank Nitty happened right after, or not long after, the situation with me and Big Raymond. And then, you know, me and Frank Nitty ended up being in the hole together for a long time. But Frank Nitty, that was revenge. They they did the same to Frank. Try to run Frank out the block, tell Frank he can't run no store box, jump on Frank, put hands on Frank. And he came back like, man, he came back like Jason with the Bethlehem, with, with his homeboy, you know. And, and, and they did major damage, man. They shut the compound right back down and... You know, dudes got stabbed, dudes got their head bust open, and and that made the news. That was on the news that night, you know what I'm saying, because it was such a, a, you know what I'm saying, a big thing, you know what I'm saying, but that was all because of revenge. That was in retaliation to what had been done to him or what had attempted to be be done to him. So, it, it man, I'm telling you, man, that, that prison is, uh, yeah, <laughs> It's not a game, man. And people lose their life like that by, you know, you know. I don't know whether you can call it ego or whether you can call it, you know, bravado, where they feel like, oh, I've scared them, or oh, I put the fear in them, or oh, I got out on them, or yeah, he don't want no man. Don't don't believe it. <laughs> don't believe it, especially not in no closed environment. I wouldn't believe it out here on the street. You know, I wouldn't believe it out here on the street, you know what I'm saying? But this is what caused dudes out here on the street to lose their life, too, because they do things to people in public. And, you know, you publicly humiliate somebody and you publicly um, shame them or beat them up or disrespect them. And a lot of people, men, especially men, you know what I'm saying, they do things out of their ego. Their ego has been bruised. Their, you know, their reputation has took a hit and they, they want to get it back. Because now people are not treating them the same as they used to treat them. People is not giving them the same respect that they used to give them. People is not looking at them the same way. And they want that back. And sometimes they willing to take the consequences of what it takes to get that back. Man, you got prison filled up tons of people in there because of their ego. Tons. Tons of them because of their ego. Because they couldn't let something go. They couldn't let it get past them. They was worried about this. But now those a lot of those same people, the, the people that they wanted to get there, to look at them a certain way again, now looking at them like, man, you crazy, man. You, 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 you man, you got a hundred years. You, you know, dude smacked them in the club and then he went and killed them. And they like, man, what you do that for? You stupid, man. You a fool, man. You get, you know what I'm saying? You could let certain things go in the public world for the greater good. You know what I'm saying? For the greater good of you and your future and your family. But in prison, if you let those same things go, it could be the detriment of, 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 of you. It could even cost you your life. You know what I'm saying? It could even cost you your life, meaning that if you let somebody take something away from you, then a lot of people are going to try to take something from you. And one of those persons is going to try to take something from you, and you ain't going to have it to give. And, and that may end up in an altercation that may cost you your life. 
then you let certain people take things from you and then somebody else may want to try to take something from you that you're not willing to part with. It could be you. It could be you that he want to take from you. He could want your manhood. It, it could be anything because you have allowed these things. You have set the standard of what you would, you know what I'm saying, what you would do and what you won't do. So it's different in prison. It's, it, you know, streets is different from, you know, prison. Prison is different from the streets. These, the rules that apply out there don't apply here. These are different rules that you have to live under. And in order to survive, you're going to have to abide by these rules or you will not make it. Period. There's no other way around it. You know, there's no other way around it. And I said this from the beginning of times I started making videos and I will continue to say this. And it's, 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 it's a sad reality, but it's true. Violence is the universal language in prison. It is the only thing that Everyone understands. It is the only thing that everyone understands. Every other language you talking, man, it goes in one ear and out the other. Chinese, Mandarin, uh, French, uh, English, it, it goes in one ear because it's just talk. But when you talk violence, everybody is listening. They have to listen. You know what I'm saying? Because it, 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 it's consequences with that. You know, it's casualties with that. You know, and um, it, it, it's just a brutal world, man. It's a brutal world, but that revenge is serious in prison, man. That's why you have to do whatever you can to avoid confrontation. But when you do have confrontation, then confrontation is definitely going to come in prison. It's just, it's mandatory. But when you do have confrontation, you have to make sure that that confrontation is a threat that is eliminated. By any means necessary, it has to get away from you. It, they have to get away from you. Whatever has to happen to make that happen, that's just that it is what it is. It is what it is. Because that very same thing could be the very same thing that ends your life. Or, or hurts you to the point where you cannot recover. Or you have a permanent injury or a permanent condition. So, you know... Yeah, man, that revenge is serious in prison, man. And um, there's no, there's no real way to get around it, man. Besides, you know, just to do what you have to do when you have to do it. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, I just was thinking about that, man. A lot of people I've seen over the years, you know, um, exact revenge and um, usually harm the person worse than then that person harmed them from the beginning. You know, so um. Yeah, that's prison, man. That's prison life, man. That's prison life, man. But anyway, like I said, man, it's a blessing in every lesson, man. And the blessing is, man, that um, you know, uh, a lot of people survive those um revenge attacks, man. And um, and they got they got the point. You know what I'm saying? And they move different from the rest of the time that they had to be incarcerated. And they probably going to move different for the rest of the time of their life, even in the free world. But, you know, um, some people lost their life due to that revenge, you know, cowboy and, you know, other people, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, the blessing is, man, that, you know, you, you have to you have to uh, adapt, cope and adjust, man, and learn from your mistakes. And hopefully it won't cost you your life. You know, but um, anyway, man, I wanted to share that with y'all, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Talk to me. I definitely talk back, man. I definitely appreciate y'all, man. We're moving on and upward, man, and we're trying to get to that 100K. We're trying to spread this message out there, man. We're trying to um keep it positive, man, and we we trying to help some people, man. I don't want to see nobody in these type of positions. I don't want to see nobody live this type of life, man. You know, and it's just a vicious, sad uh, life, man, a miserable life. So, you know, we're going to try to help some people avoid that and duck that, man. TBP, that's our mission, man. Y'all be safe out there. Be smart. Make good decisions, man. I love y'all, man. Peace. I'll be back with y'all in about 24 hours, man. In the meantime, man, y'all know what it is, man. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Duck them hooks, man. They out there. Bam. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going.
I have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.